Clinton presidential candidate Nikki Haley campaigned in Texas Friday before heading back to her home state to prepare for the primary next weekend. She's trying to close the large gap in polling between her and former President Donald Trump. Haley has intensified her attacks on the former president, taking aim at Trump's past comments about Vladimir Putin. CBS News political reporter Hunter Woodall joins me now. Hi there, Hunter. So the South Carolina primary is just over a week away. How are both Republican candidates campaigning, and what should we expect to see in the days ahead? Well, that's the fascinating thing about the South Carolina race. You know, in a normal presidential election cycle, you know, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley coming home would be an advantage to her. But when you look at former President Donald Trump and the massive, you know, advantage he had in Iowa, his win in New Hampshire, there's been this long layover between the New Hampshire primary in January and the South Carolina primary coming up, you know, on February tw later, you know, next week. And when you look at this difference, it's just tough. You know, former Governor Haley is behind former President Trump. The momentum just isn't there, and that's been a constant struggle. And it's really unlike something that we would normally see. And former President Trump has these endorsements from South Carolina. He has these leading Republicans backing him. And it's all really cut into any momentum that Haley could build as she looks at trying to, you know, have a strong performance in South Carolina. And then if she stays in the race, to do well on Super Tuesday in early March. Uh, let's turn to Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. Uh, he's saying he is not planning to run on a third-party ticket. Hunter, how are various campaignings reacting to that news? It's very interesting because, you know, sure, Senator Manchin of West Virginia said, hey, I'm not going to be an independent. I'm not, you know, I'm not running a third party in this presidential election. He's not running as an independent in this presidential election, he said. And there are still third party options in this race already. You have RFK, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., you have Jill Stein, you have Cornell West. So there are already these third party options for voters. And even without Senator Manchin actually running the presidential race, there's still the potential of no labels. They've talked about a, having what they describe as a unity ticket, that's still out there. So if you're former President Trump and you're, you know, the likely Republican nominee at this point, or you're President Joe Biden, you're looking at these third-party candidates thinking, how are they going to impact me? What's going to happen, you know, with this many third-party options in the race? We saw third-party options have a tremendous impact on the 2016 results, and that can happen again in 2024 if all these people make the ballot in certain battleground states. Meantime, CBS News polling shows Americans' views of the economy are slowly turning a bit more positive. So, Hunter, how much is that a focus on the campaign trail right now from both Nikki Haley and Donald Trump? Well, I talked earlier about how, you know, unique and strange this, you know, presidential primary cycle has been. The economy is a major election issue. It's a perennial issue for voters. It impacts them. They're, you know, thinking about it. They're asking about it. It's a major issue for them. But because of how much former President Donald Trump has, you know, loomed over this Republican primary, issues have sort of gone by the wayside in the way they would traditionally be, you know, in a primary. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to be a major issue in November. These are, you know, the economy will be a major general election issue. What's unclear is really, you know, what the messaging will be like at that point. You know, if former President Donald Trump does, in fact, become the Republican nominee, he can point out, hey, you know, look at what happened when I was president. Look at what the economy was like when I was in office. President Joe Biden can, of course, run on his record right now and say, look, here's what I've done to address the economy. Here are the actions I've taken. And it'll be really up to voters to see, you know, you know weigh in on what they think the economy means and what'll, uh, how it'll impact the general election. All right. Hunter Woodall in Washington for us. Hunter, thank you.